calendar, you see it's Wednesday. That means it's time for Stardom sit with Michael F. Florio here on NFL Fantasy Live. Also on NFL.com slash start sits. We start, as is custom, with the quarterbacks. Who are you putting in the game, Michael? So at the start of the article each week, it says, like, this article does not include names like Patrick Mahomes, Christian yeah. McCaffrey, because they're too obvious. Anthony Richardson belongs in that group now. I don't care what you think of him as a real-life quarterback. He was built in a lab to break fantasy football. He completed nine passes last week and still put up the numbers that he did in three games in his NFL career that he has played the full game. 26 fantasy points per game, 40 rushing yards, and a rushing touchdown in all of them, which means before he even throws a pass, he has 10 fantasy points under his belt on average. You have to start him regardless of the opponent, regardless of anything. The upside is just far too high. So after this week, probably don't expect to see him anymore because he is a must-start option. And then I love running quarterbacks. I told you to start him last week. Jaden Daniels went out, ran for 88 yards, two touchdowns, led the NFL in goal line carries in week one. And that's the thing. His legs make him a start each and every week. Just like Richardson, just like Lamar, just like Justin Fields when he starts. All of these guys who start him in fantasy because of what they give you with their legs. And now he gets the Giants this week, which to me feels like the kind of matchup that can get the passing game in Washington going as well. And, and yeah, the, the play before this one we saw in the highlights was one example because the Bucks had 18 pressures against Jaden Daniels. He was one of five through the air. How does that math work? Because the pressure came and Jaden would take off running they were net positives on some of those games, uh, some of those gains uh, where the commanders were getting pressured. So, uh, yes, we're starting Jay Daniels, starting uh, second year Anthony Richardson. But who are we putting on the bench? I know people are going to see Justin Herbert, big name. They're facing the Carolina Panthers. They're going to be like, let's get him in. I think this is a complete trap, and I, I want to stay as far away from it as possible. I know the Panthers are a great matchup, but... He threw one, Justin Herbert, one deep pass last year, last week. Half of his passes, over half of them, were short passes. He didn't run the ball at all. He's dealing with a foot injury, so I do not expect him to run. I think in this game where the Chargers are going to run a bunch with Dobbins, Gus Edwards, whoever else they decide to hand the ball off to, it probably is going to take Justin Herbert throwing three or four touchdowns for him to have a nice fantasy game. And the floor, in my opinion, is pretty close to what we saw last week when he didn't even get to 11. So I have really soured on Justin Herbert after just one game. Yeah, the number of possessions uh, is going to be down as well with as much that they were running the football. And, and considering that that whole first half, the Chargers had two first downs. I, I know we can we can live and feed off of that late touchdown, Lad McConkey, but there really wasn't a lot there for Herbo through the air. Let's get back to the ground. Who are we starting at running back? Mike? I am waving the white flag. I, I was wrong on J.K. Dobbins. It took me one week to admit it. I am sorry. I said I'm sitting Justin Herbert. There is no way I'm sitting J.K. Dobbins this week. Uh, Dobbins last week played 60% of the snaps. He was the passing down back. Two breakaway runs. Meanwhile, Gus Bus looked like it was stuck in mud and could not get going. 98 rush yards over expectation for J.K. Dobbins. It was in the negatives for Gus Edwards. Kamani Vidal was a healthy scratch. And then they play the Panthers. The team that has struggled mightily against the run all last year. They got ran all over in week one. The Viking, uh, they were just, their defense is so bad. The Saints moved the ball at will against them. J.K. Dobbins, who could get even better and more volume as he gets further and further removed from the serious injury, I think is in play. And then I love Brian Robinson this week. Look, I was the Austin Eckler guy, but Robinson dominated the groundwork in the backfield and those two split usage in the passing game. There was only one running back goal line carry because Jaden Daniels was taking them all, but it went to Brian Robinson. The Giants just allowed the Vikings to move the ball at will in the air on the ground. This and the Giants have success against the commanders, so it might be a sneaky high scoring game, but I think Brian Robinson could run wild on the Giants. this week. And we saw in that highlight package, Brian Robinson down at the one two times. Two times in this game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and including that, that long play. Austin Eckler was out there blocking. They're playing at the same time, folks. Yeah. <laughs> it's two, uh, two backs on the field simultaneously. So get uh, Brian Roberts Jr. in. Who are we putting on the bench? <sighs> Zamir White. It took one week. Everyone thought he was going to be the bell cow in Vegas, and then it came out, and you see right there, 
He played 39% of the snaps. Alexander Madison played 59. And Pierce said they are going to stick with the hot hand, but I think this is kind of like the Ravens' backfield. When they have a lead and the game script is favorable, it will be Zamir White. When they are trailing and in play, a comeback mode with a lot of two-minute drill passing downs, I think we're going to see a lot of Alexander Madison, which is why if you ask me this week, which Raiders running back should you play? I would say I would play Alexander Madison over Zamir White, which a week ago would have sounded crazy. But after week one, I, I think you have to follow the volume. Yeah, we, we, we slept. We slept on Alexander Madison. We'll see how that continues over the course of the season. But let's get some more sleepers. We'll be back with more starts and sits. Starts and sits with Michael F. Florio here. And we have got the wide receivers, Mike. Who are we putting into the lineup? Yeah, we're starting. I mean, you watched him on Sunday Night Football just go off. I have been waiting for the Jameson Williams breakout since he got drafted. And let me tell you, it is here. Elite usage in week one. You see there, nine targets, 121 yards. Both led the team. He had 130 air yards. That was more than the rest of the Lions combined. Plus, he was the first read on 43% of Jared Goff's throws. The usage makes his ceiling through the roof. I know we haven't seen a floor game out of him yet. There's still concerns as what that might look like, but I don't care when he's putting up numbers like he is there, especially when you can put him in like your wide receiver three, play him. And then call me stubborn. I am not backing off of Malik neighbors. No way. Not in this matchup. The commanders last season allowed the most yards and touchdowns to wide receivers. And then they gave up four touchdowns last week against the Bucks. Neighbors created a bunch of separation, which is what we wanted. He had some nice catches. In fact, he was the only Giants receiver that posted a positive EPA when targeted, meaning he's the only one that was creating value for them. I think the Giants coaches will see the tape and they will make adjustments. I'm expecting more volume to go his way. I think a breakout game is coming in week two for the Giants rookie. And if not, then the metaphorical, he's pushing the giant boulder uh, up a hill <laughs> over and over. Uh, now taking the torch from Saquon is the big part of that offense. Who are we putting on the bench, Mike? <sighs> it pains me to say, but Wisconsin Debo, Jaden Reed, I, I, it's not you, it's your quarterback. Look, he went off and eight in week one, but I do not trust Malik Willis. He has three career starts, and in those three, he has never thrown for 100 yards. He has not thrown a touchdown at the NFL yet, and he's never had a pass catcher reach 50 yards. I am rooting for you, Willis, but I am not willing to risk my fantasy team's success on it, not until at least I see it. The ceiling for Reed is probably closer to what the floor was when Jordan Love is healthy. So unless your name is Josh Jacobs, if you play for the Packers, I am probably sitting you in week two. Yeah, it's a tough one. Such a great game to start his season in week one, and then Jordan Love goes down. Hopefully Love will be back uh, in our lives in, in general and the actual football player. Let's go to tight ends, Mike. The story of week one, I think you just continue riding it into week two. Isaiah Likely, and you probably spent a lot of fab or whatever to get him off the waiver wire. Uh, and, and I loved what I saw. Not just the production, it was the usage. He led the Ravens in targets, catches, yards, touchdowns, passer rating when targeted, end zone targets, air yards. He was Lamar's first read on over a third of his throws. And, and he played from the slot. The Ravens used two tight end sets more than any team in the league. I think that him and Mark Andrews are both starts. They can coexist. And I put all of this research and information out on it. And then people will hit me back with like, flash in the pan. And I'm like, oh, okay, let's, let's see it first. Uh, but speaking of flashes in the pan, I'm sticking with Don Kincaid. I know week one was rough. He had four defenders on him at one point. Like, yeah, obviously they're not going to throw him the ball, but the usage is what I loved. 88% of the snaps, second most routes ran on the Bills. 41% of his snaps came from the slot, which is what we wanted. Last time he played Miami in week 18 last year, seven catches, 84 yards. And like I said, like Patrick has said, like Marcus said, a lot of points are going to be scored on Thursday night. I think you want exposure to both of these offenses. Dalton Kincaid with a makeup performance in week two. What tight end do we not want exposure from here in week two? You might want to, I know oh, no. you like this guy. Oh, no! I'm not an Evan Ingram believer, and week one, I think, went as poorly as it could have for him. I know this is a bold call to some, but he had four targets and 29 air yards in week one. Volume is what propped him up last year, but 
the Jaguars passing attack is suddenly more crowded. Christian Kirk is out there, and we already know that Evan Ingram's numbers take a hit when he plays. Brian Thomas Jr. looks legit. And then there's Gabe Davis, who is also going to be involved. So if he doesn't have the volume, it could be a tough day for him, especially considering how good the Browns are at stopping tight ends. Ah, it's, it pains me to say, but yeah, week one was rough. Go to NFL.com slash start sit to see more of Mike's work for week two.